Well, hello, YouTubers. Mike here. Welcome back to my channel. Okay, we're going to do something a little different in this video. Something I haven't done before. Something you might find very interesting or not. If you normally tune into my channel to see me extracting gold from e-waste, you might be surprised to see me in this project trying to extract gold from rocks. Yeah, hey, it's fun pulling gold out of e-waste, but it's fun pulling gold out of the ground, too, okay? So the wife and I have been spending a lot of time out west, our Arizona place, our Wyoming place, and I've been bringing back a lot of neat rocks and cutting them up and uh, polish them and whatnot in various videos. I'll put some links up in the upper right to those if you're interested. If you're any kind of rock hound, you can check those out. Well, when we're out rock hunting, I'm always on the lookout for what might be gold deposits. Or if we see an old gold mine, I'll look around on the dumps there and see if I can find any bits and pieces that might be valuable. So what we got here is some stuff I've brought back from out west from gold mines. And we're going to crush it up and we're going to see if we can get any gold out of it. Now the stuff in this bag, we'll talk about this one here in a second. The stuff in this bag came from a small mine or prospect pit in Wyoming at a place where I was out rock hounding and I happened across this mine which I did not even know was there and in fact is not showing up on any um, map that I have that shows mine locations but somebody had been mining something and there was a nice vein of quartz going through there and I'll put a link in the upper right to that rock hounding video where I was out there and I found this quartz vein and I pulled a lot of these samples out of that quartz vein. They are just full of rusty mineralization. You know, and the old timer miners have a saying that uh, gold rides an iron horse. So where you find iron mineralization on quartz, you've, you've got a good chance of finding gold. And there's some serious mineralization in there. There's some uh, sulfides crystals up in, all up in this stuff. And this rust on here, this is uh, decomposed sulfides. And there could be a lot of gold hiding in those decomposed sulfides, or there could be none. The old timers didn't really mine the area very much, so I'm thinking they didn't get a lot of gold out of this stuff. But there might be enough here for fun, okay? So we'll see if I get any gold out of this. I'm going to have to crush this stuff up and crush it up pretty small, and these are big rocks. I'm going to have to crush it up into a fine powder. And we'll pan out the heavy stuff, which will be the sulfides and any uh, metals like gold in here. And uh, we'll see what we get. It's going to be a bit of a process. It may be a multi, maybe a multi-video project. We'll see. So that's what this stuff is. And I can smell the sulfides. I'm going to stick my nose in this bag. I can smell the sulfur from the sulfides in this stuff. So I know we got sulfides here. The old timers may not have thought it was worth mining, but you know what? Gold wasn't worth as much back then, and uh, their methods were a lot more primitive back in the 1800s. So we'll see if there's anything valuable in this stuff. If there is, I know right where to go back, and I can get a whole lot more of it. Okay, now this is a different story. This rock right here, I'm not going to tell you exactly where I got it. But I will say, and I only have the one rock, unfortunately. This came off of the waste dump of a historic mine that was known for producing just outrageously rich gold ore. Thousands of ounces per ton in some of the ore chutes in that mine of gold, okay? So, um, unfortunately, if you go out there today, you know, it's been like, I don't know, 120, 130 years. Um, the Forest Service has bulldozed down the, uh, the, the waste piles and uh, rock hounds and weekend prospectors have picked it over really well because of the reputation of that mine. This is the only halfway decently mineralized piece of rock I could find out there, although I plan on going back in the future and looking some more. Looking at satellite images of the area, there are waste dumps and rock piles I didn't even see when I was out there on the ground level. So I'll go back and I'll look some more. Especially if I crush up this big rock and I get any significant amount of precious metal out of it. I will definitely go back and look and see if I can find some more. 
So, uh, yeah, that's the story behind this rock. Unfortunately, I have the one, but it's a big one, fortunately. So, you know, there's a lot of mineralization there. It's a lot of, uh, lot of iron staining. There's some other mineralization. There's some darker veins of minerals in it. I hope those are sulfides, and I hope they contain gold. I guess we'll find out. So the first step is to crush this stuff up. And um, actually the first step is really going to be to break these rocks down small enough that I can get them in my ore crusher and then crush them up um, smaller into smaller pieces and then I have a, a secondary manual ore crusher that I can turn it into a powder and then we can pan it and see, if, uh, see what we got. Uh, we may or may not see any free gold but I'm sure we're going to find a lot of sulfides in the pan and those sulfides just might contain some gold. So, okay, let me get set up and get started on this project because I got a feeling it's going to take a while and it's like 100 degrees out here so I'm going to be a sweaty mess doing this. So, so pardon the sweat. Okay, so first thing I need to do is I need to bust these samples up into small enough pieces to fit in my little ore crusher. So I got a cardboard box here. I'm going to beat on the rocks in the cardboard box so it can catch all the pieces. That'll make life a little easier. Uh, I've got two different buckets, A and B, because I want to keep these samples separate. So this one rock I have from the historically very rich mine is going to be sample A. I'll put it in the A bucket and in the bag full of stuff over there. As I bust it up, I'll put it in the B bucket because I gotta keep these samples separate. Otherwise, I won't know what came from where and where to go back to to get more if it's good stuff. Okay, and I got a little a little gear here. I got a big hammer, my big framing hammer. I also have some gloves and a face shield. I'm gonna gear up a little bit before I start with this because there's gonna be quartz flying and quartz is very sharp and nasty. So I don't want to lose an eye or get my hands all bloody. So. Let me gear up and we'll start beating the snot out of this stuff and see if I can bust it up. Okay, here we go. I actually break it up pretty easy. Okay, those pieces. Ooh, sparks flying. I don't know if you saw that. Okay, those should be plenty small enough to get in my small ore crusher. So let me get that stuff transferred to bucket A, and then we'll uh, we'll start crushing the stuff for bucket B. Well, some of the pieces from sample B are already small enough, but I got the bigger ones in there, and I'll just smash on them for a little bit and see if we can uh, reduce them down in size. Hopefully this stuff will smash as easy as the first batch did. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe. Boy, there's a lot of crystals in that. I hope those are sulfide crystals. Oh, you get back in the box. No escape. nice veins of mineralization in it. So I really want to crush that up. See what we get out of it. Sparks flying! Oh yeah. This is some hard quartz. Okay, I'm sure you're getting the idea. I'm going to beat on this stuff a little more. 
and then transfer it to bucket B. Okay, well, there's my two samples and one seriously beat up box that's ready for the garbage. All right, let me move on to the next step. We gotta crush this stuff a lot finer before I can pan it out. All right, so here's my little ore crusher. I'm gonna run this stuff through. And I've showed this thing in another video um, where I was using it to crush ceramic IC chips to get the gold out of them. And basically, it's just a little jaw crusher. It's got a very wide opening at the top and an adjustable width slit at the bottom. Right now, I have the slit set fairly wide. And what happens is, turn the crank on this thing and the moving jaw rocks back and forth and crushes the ore against the fixed jaw. And as it breaks up, it drops deeper and deeper in and gets crushed smaller and smaller and smaller until it'll go out through that little slit down there. So my plan here is I am going to run the ore samples through this uh, with the fairly wide slit to start with and give it a preliminary crush. Then I'll probably make the slit narrower and run it through again and give it a finer crush and we'll see what we've got then. I will probably have to crush it even further with another method, but this is gonna do a lot of the work for me, all right? And I'm not gonna drive it by hand. No, I'm gonna drive it with this. So I get my air compressor out and set that up, and then we'll get to work on this ore. Okay, let's give this a shot. Um, you'll probably hear the air, well, you'll definitely hear the air compressor turn on from time to time. Let me uh, throw a couple of chunks of this stuff in here, and we'll see what this will do. Oh, this is working pretty good, actually. I think it's crushing the quartz better than it crushed the... Uh, ceramic IC chips the other day. Of course, it's made to crush quartz. working well. This is working better than I expected it to. I'll give you a close-up look at the kind of grind I'm getting. It's also a little finer grind than I was expecting. So uh, I'll give you a close-up look at that. I'm almost through sample A. You know, so this is working great. So here's the sort of grind I'm getting out of this thing. I mean, it's still too big to pan. I need to pulverize it a lot smaller. But still, that's a little better than I was expecting. I may still have to run it through a second time with the uh, with the jaws closer together and then move on to my secondary crushing method. Or is it tertiary? Because I've already crushed it twice, haven't I? Alright, so let me finish sample A. A little bit left in there. And then I'll get sample B done too. 
Okay, I have decided that this is producing enough dust that I need to mask up. Just for my own safety here because this is silica dust. You don't really want to breathe too much of it. So... Sample A through the initial grind on this thing. We start on sample B and get it through. This is working great. That didn't take very long at all. This thing is uh, struggling a little bit with sample B. I think this quartz is harder than sample A. I mean, I know I had a harder time busting this stuff up with the hammer. So this thing's having a little bit harder time grinding it. It's getting it, it's just slower. Sometimes it's bogged down pretty bad. I find that pulsing it works better than running it continuous. And I'll tell you what, I can really smell the sulfides in this ore as I'm crushing it. I can smell the sulfur, so hopefully there's gold in those sulfides. All right, I have adjusted the jaws to be a little closer together. I mean, it's, I can't get them much closer together than they were, so a lot of this stuff's probably just gonna fall right through, but maybe we can get a somewhat finer grind on some of it, some of the bigger pieces. So here's side-by-side -side comparison. Um, this is the stuff that's been through the second time. This stuff that's only been through the first time. You can see I'm getting a much finer grind over here, so that's working pretty good. And it's going really fast, which is nice. Um, I've just got a little bit of sample A left to do over here, and then I'll get on sample B, run it through a second time. And uh, yeah, sample B took a long time to go through the first time, and I'm hoping it'll go through just about as quick as the second time as sample A is. We'll see. But this is working really well. We've come a long way from where we started with those big quartz rocks, but in all honesty, neither one of these, sample A here or sample B, is ground up fine enough to really tell me if there's any gold, significant amount of gold in it. we got to pulverize them even more. And I don't have a piece of equipment that will do all of this stuff at once, but I could do a little bit of a representative sample of each, and uh, we can pan that out and uh, see what we got. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so what I've got here is uh, the tumbler from my rock tumbler, and I have put some steel ball bearings in it, and we're going to make ourselves a little bitty uh, ball mill, and we're going to grind some of this stuff up really super fine, and then we'll pan it out. I'm most interested in sample A here, so I'm going to get a few scoops of sample A and put it in here. I'm going to try and get sort of a representative sample here, mix it up good, maybe one more, and I'm going to put this on the rock tumbler and I'm going to let it go for a few hours, and we should get a pretty fine powder out of it, and then maybe we can pan something out and see if we got anything. Okay, there it goes. We'll be back in a couple hours and uh, see what we got. Okay, this has been tumbling for a few hours. Let's see what we've got. To pardon the noise in the background, we're getting a new roof today. Oh, that is, that is really finely powdered for the most part by the looks of it. I'm going to run it through my uh, 40 mesh sieve here. So 
anything that doesn't go through the sieve can go back in here. Along with another couple of scoops of sample A. And we'll put this on and we'll let it run for a couple more hours. And we'll get enough material here that I can do a little bit of panning. That's, that's not quite enough. So we'll run this for a couple hours and see what we get. All right, be back. Okay, it's been a couple more hours. It's not a quick process, okay? They were all powdered up again. Let's see what didn't crush up here. There's actually a fair amount of stuff in here that didn't crush up. Maybe I just didn't run it long enough. But I think we have enough to pan now. At least uh, a quick test pan anyway. I'm going to have to... Uh, Gonna have to powder a lot more of this stuff, but uh, we'll give it a quick test pan and see what we got. Okay, let's uh, see what we got in this stuff. It's a start anyway. Gonna have to pulverize a lot more of it, but uh, yeah, it's a start. That's a little hydrophobic. Let me break up the lumps and get it all good and wet here. Might be from the inside of that tumbler. Yeah, this really is as much material as I thought it was at first. This is, uh... Yeah, this is gonna pan out pretty darn quick. Let's see what's in it here. Get rid of some of this, uh... dark stuff here. Get a good look at what's in the pan. Should be mostly just finely powdered quartz debris. Neighbor's dogs are having an issue. Yeah, now we're getting down to the light stuff here. That's the quartz debris. I'm not sure what that dark stuff was. It might have come from the inside of the tumbler. It might have been like finely powdered rubber. I don't know. It was very light, whatever it was. It left the pan early on. Now we're just down to this this blonde stuff here. You can actually pan some of this off. Gently, very gently. You get where maybe you can see better what I'm doing. Sorry.
And this is this light stuff is just quartz debris, finely powdered quartz. If there's any heavies, they're gonna be down in the corner of the of the pan there. So I should be able to just gently wash this light stuff away. And we'll see what's down there. It's gonna take a little washing now. getting there. It wasn't a huge sample, so probably not a whole lot staying in the pan, but we'll get a look at what does stay. down to it now. Get some darker stuff in there. We're getting underneath that blonde quartz debris. Our heavy sulfides and any free gold's going to be down here. Get really gentle now. Washing it. Alright, that's about as best I can do. Let me just uh, wash the material back and we'll get a look at what's in the pan here. Oh my. Okay. Try and get a picture of that out in the sun. Where you can see better. Yeah, I'll try and get a picture of that out in the sun. Okay, there's a lot of sparkly stuff in this pan. And you know, if you were a newbie to prospecting, you might think you really hit it big, okay? But I'll tell you what, that sparkly stuff, it ain't gold. It's the proverbial fool's gold. We got sulfides in here. Fair amount of sulfides in the pan. And they are sparkly little things, but they are not gold. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, because gold can hide inside sulfide crystals. And there could even be a few little bits of flower gold hiding up in that pile of sulfides, too. I'll try rocking the material back and forth and, and try and clean it up a little bit, see if I can see any actual gold. But so far, all I see are sulfide crystals, sparkly sulfide crystals, and a few ruby red uh, garnets in there. So far, that's all I see. But like I say, gold could be hiding inside the sulfides. So uh, there's a way to get those out. And we'll talk about that in a while. But let me, uh, let me see if I can find any actual gold in this pan. All right, I see two or three specks in amongst the sulfides that are almost certainly actual gold. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to take a screenshot of this and maybe circle them and put a put a still image up to show you. So I think there is a little bit of flower gold in here amongst all these sulfides. So yeah, there is some gold in, in this sample A. Okay, and we could maybe get some more gold out of it if we roast these sulfides and smelt them. But I'm going to have to finish pulverizing the rest of the material and panning it down to concentrates like this before it's worthwhile smelting. So uh, we might give that a try. So I'm going to tumble some more of sample A and pan it out. I'm going to save these sulfides and I'm going to put them in a 
in a bottle. And as I pan out more and more from sample A, I'll keep putting them in the bottle until hopefully we can build up enough to make it worthwhile for smelting. And I will do the same with sample B, assuming we have good stuff in sample B, too. But I'm pretty sure I see some gold in there, amongst the fool's gold. All right. Let me get to work. Yeah, I don't know how well it's showing up, but I panned out a little bit more of sample one, and there's a little chunk of gold right there, surrounded by uh, sulfide crystals. Nice, that's quite a bit bigger than the other gold I was seeing, too. So sample one's got some gold in it. Cool. But, I'll tell you what, um, ball milling this stuff in the uh, rock tumbler just isn't working. It's taking too long. A lot of this stuff isn't getting ground up. I'm going to have to resort to some other methods to grind this stuff up. And um, I'm not going to be able to be lazy about it. It's going to take some effort on my part. So let me get set up for that. And we will start grinding this stuff up in a serious way. Alright, time for desperate measures. And I know you don't have to tell me. I know there are better ways to do this. And... Um, if I start processing more gold ore in the future, yeah, I may get one of those like attachments that goes on a grinder and uh, we may do it that way. So I'm going to finish uh, A through this, this manual grinder here. Actually, it doesn't take that much energy. You just gotta lift it and drop it, lift it and drop it. Let gravity do the work. I twist it around a little bit. I think that helps too. And anything that won't go through the sieve is gonna get returned to this for further processing. And believe it or not, we'll actually get through this fairly quick. It's just kind of a pain to have to do it this way. So I'm going to finish A, and then I'll start on B. I've actually got some tumbling too, some A. But that'll probably be the last batch tumbling. Anything that doesn't get ground up fine in there, I'll just process it this way. I'll dry it out and process it this way. like one of the old-time stamp mills in a gold mine. Gravity doing the work here. Steel against steel. So, there's how much I've done already. Not very much, it doesn't seem like, but it'll go fairly quick. Certainly faster than the tumbling. So let me get this done so that I can get this stuff panned out and get down to uh, our, our free gold and sulfides. Alright. I have improved my system somewhat and it has sped me up a lot. In fact, I am all the way through. Let me take my headgear off here. I've got a mask and uh, some ear protection. I'm protected from the dust that this is producing and the noise it's producing. And um, I've actually managed to get all the way through sample A and uh, convert it to powder, very fine powder that passes through my 40 mesh screen. I've still got a long way to go on sample B though. Definitely going to have to find a better way to do this in the future. I do have some sample B here through the 40 mesh screen. I'm going to get enough to do a pan or two of it just to see what all's in it. You know, I, I, I ran some of this stuff through the 40 mesh screen already and collected the smallest bits that came out of here. 
and did a quick pan on them and there were a lot of sulfides in them. I didn't see any free gold like in uh, sample A where there was plenty of free gold. Every pan I've done is sample A pretty much. I see flower gold in it. But sample A came from a really rich mine. This stuff, sample B, just came from a quartz vein I found when I was out rock hunting that I'm pretty sure had been previously sampled by miners and they decided they didn't want it. So I don't know if there's any real gold in it or not. I guess we'll have to find out. I'm going to crush up some more of it and uh, see what I see when I pan it out. But anyway, I have improved my system. At least I'm not bent over on the ground anymore. I'm standing up straight, which is a lot better for my back and knees. And um, I've got this whole barbell weight here to absorb the impact. The inertia of it prevents it from destroying my table here as I'm pounding. And it's actually going faster than I thought, but definitely I need to find a better way to do this. I may buy one of those um, angle grinder attachment things. I'll show you a picture of that. I think I'm going to get one of those. That should make life easier in the future if I continue doing this. But I could probably get through sample B. It's just going to take me a while, maybe a couple of days, to get through sample B. I mean, it took a good couple, good couple hours to get through sample A. And there wasn't that much of sample A. It was just one rock. I had a whole bag of rocks for sample B. But making progress. Definitely making progress. I want to get enough of sample B here to do a decent pan of it and uh, see where that leaves us. So let me do some more crushing. We'll pan out a little of sample B, see what it looks like, and see where we go from there. All right? Just have pity on me, because you know what I'm going to be doing for the next little while. Or not so little, even. All right, so we know sample A contains gold. I panned out a little bit of it, and just about every pan had some flour gold in it as well as some sulfides. But I've panned out enough, or I've, but I've crushed out enough of sample B now that I can do a decent pan of it. We'll see what's in sample B. This should be interesting. See if we can get rid of all this light stuff here. I suspect this light reddish stuff is rust from broken down sulfides. I suspect. I could be wrong. Could be something else. But that's what I suspect. It stays in the water column when I stop agitating and I can just pour it off. And then once I get through all of it, get some clean water in here, we'll get down to the blonde um, crushed quartz stuff. Yeah, it's cleaning up. Yeah, I suspect that's rust from broken down sulfides. Can't think of what else it would be that's that color and... Of course, if the sulfides are breaking down in this stuff, that means they're going to be releasing any metal they contain. So there might be some gold in here, or maybe some copper. Some native copper, we'll see. Maybe nothing. Don't know about sample B. It was, uh... I think it was pretty clearly, um... an exploratory mine. I mean, they took out a section of this quartz vein I sampled this from, but they didn't take out all of it. They didn't pursue it into the hill in either direction. They just sort of took out the middle. Maybe they didn't have the equipment to pursue it. I don't know. Maybe, the, maybe it wasn't producing enough metal for them to feel it was worthwhile to pursue it.
But if there is anything in this, I can go back and get a whole lot more of it. It's actually not that far from our Wyoming ranch. It's pretty darn accessible. Yeah, sample A is a bit more of a drive to get to. And uh, if it's been raining, it's definitely going to be a four-wheel drive drive. Sample B. If there's anything good in this, I can get back there real easy when we're out there again next month and collect some more of this stuff. We'll have to see if there really is anything good in it. Getting darker. Gotten through a lot of the blonde quartz. Down to some darker stuff in there. See what we got here. Well, there's a lot of sulfides in here, yeah. There's a lot of sulfides. You know what? There's a lot of sulfides. There's, I think, some um, garnet crystals in here. I may need, I may see some bits of copper too. If that's gold, that's gold that's really high in copper. I will try and get a close-up photo of that and insert it. So I think I see some I think I see some bits of copper. There's some garnet crystals and there's some sulfides there. I don't really see anything obviously looks like gold, but I think I see copper. Okay, so here's I've rocked back some more of the stuff, gotten rid of a lot of the sulfides, and I think this stuff is metal. So I think we got some copper over on the left. And right about in the center there, that might be gold. That might be gold. It's really hard to tell. Could be big grains of sulfide, but I don't think so. They're awfully heavy. I managed to move the other sulfides off. I, that might be gold. So we might have some gold in sample B, too. So that would be good. That'll give me incentive to continue crushing sample B the hard way. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna take the sulfides I've separated out. Let's see, sample A, sample B. I wanna put it in the right container. This is sample B. I'm gonna wash all this stuff down into this container. Hopefully that is gold I saw in there. But definitely we got sulfides, maybe some native copper in there, all right? So this is my sample B container for um, all of the heavies that I pan out, okay? So we don't have a whole lot in here yet, mostly water. Uh, sample A, I have panned more stuff out, and we've got a little bit more. I've got more panning to do on sample A. But, uh, so my plan moving forward is um, I'm going to pan out the rest of sample A, and all the heavies going to go in here. So all the sulfides, all the flour, gold, everything I find in sample A going to continue going in here. And uh, same with sample B. All the heavies, after I get finished crushing up sample B and panning it all out, all the heavy stuff that remains in the pan is going to go in here. It looks like we've got maybe some native copper, some garnets, some sulfides, possibly some gold, all going to go in here. So in the end we'll have all the heavies from sample A, sample B in these two containers. And I'm thinking in the next video, 
What we will try to do is we'll try to smelt this stuff and see if we can get a couple of little gold beads out of it, okay? Try my hand at smelting, something I haven't done on video before. So I've got a lot more work ahead of me. I need to continue uh, panning out sample A, get the rest of it panned out, crush out sample B, get it panned out, get everything in here. Uh, we'll probably roast the sulfides before um, doing a smelt. Now these sample A sulfides have been sitting around a while and they look like they are oxidizing on their own. It looks like they're turning into rust. But I'll probably roast them anyway just to make sure they completely get oxidized. And the same with these. We'll roast them and then we'll smelt them and see if we can get any gold out of them. So in the next video, by then I should have sample B all crushed and panned out, the rest of sample A panned out, and we should be ready to do some experimental um, smelting. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe to see my future videos where we're going to try and do some smelting. And uh, press the little bell icon. YouTube wants you to press to be notified when new videos come out. As a subscriber, if you press that bell icon, you will be notified when I release new videos, so you'll know when they're out. Um, check out my second channel, too, ElectroGeek64. Uh, subscribe there. Press the bell icon there. Like and subscribe in both places, please. If Give this video a like if you found it at all interesting, educational, inspirational, whatever. Give it a thumbs up. Give it a like. Um, and comment. Please feel free to comment. Uh, all you old hands at smelting out there or uh, rock crushing, if you've got any uh, sage advice for me, please feel free to leave a comment down below this video. Constructive criticism, suggestions, whatever. I'm always open to that. And so thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Well, maybe we'll get to smelting this stuff. Bye.